Herzlich willkommen, welcome to the show. It's Monday night and we are here live with the Pirates Cove and with a great guest. It's Jalen Embry in the house. Uh, how you guys doing? Welcome, welcome. And Max is missing again because Max is on a business trip and I already got messages like, oh, did you guys have a problem? Uh, It's the second show in a row without Max. And no way. what is going on? Max and is okay, trust. Max is okay and <laughs> I'm with Max. I'm okay with Max. Everybody's okay with Max. So um, Max can't be here, but Max will be here next week. So everything is fine. And again, behind the computers, the lights and the cameras, it's Ricardo, the guy behind everything who managed this also applause for ricardo he's doing a great job yes sir so we're gonna do the show in english because we have an english-speaking guest and it uh, wouldn't make sense to speak german or italian uh, it oh, oh, how it is your spanish all. um it's better than german okay <laughs> <laughs> but mine is not existing so we stay with english got you and uh, if something is not working if there's anything um with the sound with the lights with anything please write it in the chat and we can change that and please also write all your questions to me to jalen to whoever in the chat and we will answer them and yes already welcome to everybody who tuned in it's going to be a an hour of hopefully a great conversation so, first question of the night. Mm -mm. How are you feeling, Jalen? I am feeling really good. Um, you know, I couldn't be better. I've um, been able to take care of my body, you know, the past few off days. Um, been lifting, been hydrating, been watching lots of film, and just getting comfortable, you know, to the system and to the atmosphere. Um, yeah, I mean, it's good that you feel good because there's this, like, somebody says 24 hours other people say 48 hour yeah. rule because we lost the game on sunday yes so do you have the 24 or the 48 hour i have a 24 hour rule um i was talking to the guys on a bus and i think we were on a bus around like 11 13 11 15 i said yo we got a couple more minutes you know before it's the next day you know and everyone was like oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah so uh 24 hour rule for me for sure Nice. Yeah, we will talk today about the last game against um, the Stuttgart Church against, uh, yeah, uh, a very good defensive team who hold us to three points. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also played very successful defensive football. But the end, at the end, it wasn't enough for a win. So uh, we are three and one now. We are not undefeated anymore. But you know, that that loss does not define us at all. Exactly. You know, it only makes us stronger and hungrier for more W's. And we will also talk about your football journey because uh, it's an interesting story huh. I think you have to tell. Yeah. And uh, obviously we're going to talk about the upcoming game against the Minalo, Milano Seamen next Sunday here in Tivoli Stadium. Mm -hmm. At home. So, yes. um, for the people who don't know, um, Jalen was here already in in. April. Yes, I was for seven days. For seven days. <laughs> And then I can exactly um, remember a message from you, which really made me uncomfortable <laughs> because I wrote you something like either I needed an information or yeah. something and you just answered, talk to coach. I'm not longer on the team. Yeah. You told me, uh, come to the office. Um, I have to take you somewhere. And yeah. I said, yeah, I'm no longer on a team. You said, what? Is everything okay? I thought something happened. <laughs> I thought either you were like arrested. <laughs> no, or, or, no, or, no, really. <laughs> I thought like they cut you because of something uh, happened. Man, bad. that would have been a story to tell. <laughs> Then you wouldn't be here <laughs> in the show, obviously. That would have been a story for sure. But um, uh, you had a call at that time. Yes. From um, I got a call from the CFL, um, Montreal um, Alouettes. They invited me to training camp and uh, they wanted me to come perform and, you know, earn a contract. Um, of course, I'm here now, so it didn't go as planned. Um, but, you know, everything happens for a reason. Um, I learned a lot out there um, as a player um, and as a, a teammate. Um, learning the different positions, you know, they threw me in the fire, um, playing with the twos and the threes in practice. and the, It was great. You know, I can ask for a, a better situation or a better um, story. Um, and to be able to come back here after being released, after training camp, you know, it was, it's a blessing, you know. 
<laughs> so you you left the the Raiders offices Tivoli Stadium with the words like hey I'm coming back uh, well we don't did. don't be don't be sad <laughs> or disappointed I'm coming back these were your last words I think when 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 we say goodbye it, it was and when when coach um he he threw up a um a, a hit video um and I just felt the the vibes with the teammates the players and myself I'm like oh this is home like this is where I want to be this is like I didn't want to leave um But yeah, like I knew I was going to come back eventually. I just didn't know it was that soon, but I spoke it into existence. So I'm here. <laughs> and you're here. You arrived last week and um, yeah, we're th you were thrown into fire again. Yes, I actually was. You stepped was. out of the plane and just entered the we locker had, room. We had practiced um, as soon as I got off the plane. It was probably four hours. Um, it was very hot. Um, I got off the plane with a jumpsuit. Um <laughs> And I started sweating balls like it was crazy. Um, but yeah, uh, once I hydrated and, you know, saw the guys and saw all, all the coaches and it, I said, oh, I have to practice. You know, I was excited um, being at home for like a week and a half or maybe two weeks. You know, I was just ready to play ball, you know, so learning the plays and all that stuff was pretty cool. You know, learning the different terminology. Um, but yeah, I, I actually handled adversity pretty well on game day. Um, you know, we didn't get the outcome, but, um, I feel like I, I can take some stuff off film, you know, having some bad eyes, um, you know, turning that into good eyes, um, trusting my teammates around me, knowing that they're all ball players because we have a solid team, offense, defense, and special teams. So just to see us grow and uh, lose together as a family, um, I just can't wait to see us win. Mm. So it's going to be fire. Let, let's talk about last Sunday. Um, yeah, you guys left on Saturday yes. with the bus, slept one night in Stuttgart. Yes. And um, how how went the trip? Did, was it just smooth? Or, um, or everybody focused? Because uh, I, for the people who don't know, I didn't travel. It was, uh, that's why also we didn't have the show yesterday. Because yeah. normally it's on Monday. I was on a on a short, short vacation with my family, needed that. And um, that's why I didn't travel with the team. So how was the trip, actually? The, the trip was great. Um, um, we, we didn't have uh, meals on the bus, but everyone brought snacks and, you know, their own stuff and sharing is caring. So everyone was switching seats, you know, listening to music, sleeping, um, playing cards. Um, the energy was, was high. Uh, we got off the bus and checked into the hotel rooms. And, you know, we had a breath work. And with uh, Coach Frank, it was amazing was um, it the first time you did it it was uh the second time yep. the first time i did it actually the day before i left mm, and I, I i told him like yeah i needed more of that um but yeah the environment was cool there in stugart um brought back some memories you know because um i stayed in a similar hotel with uh frankfurt last last year um so it was good you know we had a good breakfast you know we had good meetings um everything was going smooth everything we talked about throughout the week You know, we was just checking it off, checking it off, uh, you know, but we didn't get that dub. No, we uh, didn't. We didn't. And it, then there, there was, the, you know, often um, people from the outside say, yeah, did the guys probably take it too easy? Mm -hmm. Did they thought, oh, we are un undefeated? So we... Uh, no, no. You just described yeah. it. Everybody was like, focus. Yeah, oh, yeah. Breakfast, bus, mm -hmm. stadium. Uh, game prep. Yeah. Like we knew, that we knew there wasn't, um, we knew it there, that it was going to be a dogfight. Um, from the start to finish and um, you know the coaches prepared us for that you know like they always do um, you know we was just short two or three plays you know we couldn't get um, we beat ourselves with penalties and you know it's it's expected you know but we grew um, literally after the game we all sat and talked we actually had to wait a few hours for the bus to arrive so I feel like that helped us even more, you know, to communicate with one another, you know, see everyone's faces and body language and everyone was hurt from it for sure. Like we knew they were a better team than last year, you know, but hey, we just can't wait to see them when they come to, you know, our house. It's going to be a different game. I can promise you that. Um, 
let's talk a little bit about the details. Um, yeah, the the game started offensively mm -hmm. slow from both sides, mm -hmm. a lot of punts, and yes. then uh, right before the the half time, we kicked the field goal and went three and zero mm -hmm. to the locker rooms for half time. Uh, how did the game went for you? Uh, how was it to be on the field again? How was it to play again? Actually, because in 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 the CFL you just mm -hmm. practiced the se season yeah. just started correct um but how was it for you personally to be on the field to be uh, yeah in game mode um personally um i won't lie like my legs were sluggish um my mind was a little flustered with the calls um but after the second half we adjusted pretty well you know coach came in and said hey like instead of playing this you know let's play not just one option but three options And once he gave us that authority, we were able to see based off formations and, you know, quarterbacks intentions that, you know, where the ball was going and where it wasn't. So I was able to adjust pretty well. And, you know, at first we could have, or at first for me, um, I could have kept my feet under myself a few times. Um, I felt myself slipping and second guessing myself. Um, but, you know, we fought all the way to the fourth quarter. You know, we only gave up six points and in any league, that's great you know, six points. Um, but yeah, I feel like um, it was a solid game for me. I was happy to be back. Mm. You know, it felt good. I thought I was going to cramp up or be gassed. It was hot, right? Yeah, it was very hot, but I adjusted pretty well, me personally. Well, yeah, but at the end, we didn't score more than these three points right before halftime, yeah. and then uh, we lost the game. And the A really bad news just arrived yesterday, right? For yes. Raider family and especially for Zan Sandro. So greetings are going out to Sandro. Um, yeah, he's out for season um, with a bad knee injury. That's that's the sport, right? Yeah. That's that's what we all know. It can happen every time. It is. It can happen in the blink of an eye. Yeah. You know. Um, I'm also. You know. We're rooting for him. I'm. More so, I'm happy that he's going to still be with us. You know, he's a homegrown guy, so he's still going to be a part of the team. And we get to see his recovery process, you know, through, as the days go on, which is good. And Sandy is a great guy. Um, he was motivating me and helping me while I was out there in the CFL, you know, keeping me humbled and focused on the right things because he is a, a great professional. And um, prior to the play, you know, uh, I was out there at punt return. I mm -hmm. wanted to get that rep from her, for him, you know. But like you said, everything happens for a reason and things can go either way. Like it could have been him, could have been me, could have been anyone, mm -hmm. you know. But we're rooting for you, brother. And just know there's love coming from me. And you will come back stronger. Oh, yeah. And he will he will work his, oh, his yeah. butt off. Oh, yeah. He But... may come back tomorrow. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> no, you really never know. <laughs> so you left. Be ready. <laughs> No, but uh, all the best to you, Sandro. And um, I think it was tough to see that after you came back from from um, from the states and you suffered a little injury at the beginning mm -hmm. of the season, and then you really had your first real game. This happened. It's uh, it was not nice to see. Yeah, yeah. It it's never nice to see an injury. Yeah. Right? Well, yeah, it was a lot of injuries um, in total in the game. Yeah. yeah. Stuttgart like... just posted they have seven. <laughs> Seven out for season, and I didn't even know that. No, not only from that game, yeah, but in total, they already have seven out oh, for yeah. seasons. That's Definitely, uh, praying for the running back that got hurt that game. Um, I heard screaming, and mm -hmm. I didn't know what to do. I just got down and took a knee. I was just hoping he can get up, but yeah. I'm praying for you as well, my guy. All the best to all injured players all over the league. Um, yeah, get well soon. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. Hello again to everybody. We have guys from Germany. Um. And um, if you have questions, then write them into the chat. I will also ask um, Jalen some questions. But if you guys have questions, just feel free to, to type them in. Um, would you <coughs> say, we have a question, actually. <laughs> would <laughs> you question. say Stuttgart had a better game plan or was it just a bad day for the offense? Um, Jalen, what do you think? Um, honestly, uh, just based off um, the stats and everything, like you said, it was six to three. Um, so I would say like just self-inflicted wounds. Um, I wouldn't say they had a better game plan. You know, like we said, we came in knowing it was going to be a dog fight and, you know, we have to score in the red zone. We have to get more turnovers. We have to get some interceptions. Um, there was a, a muff fumble, um, on punt, um, that we could have re recovered 
and scored there. You know, there's always points on the board that we missed out on our own. Um, you know, they're a good team and all, you know, I give them credit, but, you know, I feel like we were the tougher team um, mentally and physically, you know, just the self-inflicted wounds. We got to, you know, take care of those. And that starts in practice. And it's a game of inches. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, it can fall this or that way. Right? Oh, yeah. Like I said, a muff punt, a, mm -hmm. a turnover there, little things happened here and there. And um, as far as I, I saw, the game is like, yeah, we, we had too many mistakes on our side. Yeah. So it was more that we, we beat it ourselves. Yes. And uh, like you said at the beginning, holding a team like Stuttgart at six points mm -hmm. is already a strong performance oh, from yeah. our defense. And yeah, on our, our offense, we didn't perform the way like we wanted to. But um, what is, and that's maybe my last comment to that, They also had good home field advantage. Oh yeah! So their fans are loud. Yes. Uh, the sun was brutal. Yeah. Uh, traveling is always a little obstacle. It should not be an excuse, right? Don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. I don't want to put it on the loud noises. Oh yeah. But we also have got home game advantage. Of course. And, and of course, all that matters. Yeah. You know, when you're home and when you're away, you know, you have to think about that. Um, you have to be prepared for their loud fans and all that. Like I. I lost in the uh, before the game. I played uh, rock paper scissors with the fans, and uh, I lost uh, two three. And so you know, <laughs> you got to be prepared. I got to practice more. And, and know? they have these like megaphones, right? With oh, the yeah. with the crazy noises. Oh yeah, and for yes, sure. it makes a difference. And we we saw it the week before here in in Tivoli Stadium against Barcelona. I think our fans forced three or four. Um, Uh, delay of games because they were so loud and the communication on the field for oh, Barcelona yeah. wasn't possible. Facts. And this will happen again when when yeah the other teams come mm -hmm. to Tivoli. There's a question for you. Um, how did your nickname Juju? Um, Where does it come from? So Juju was a childhood nickname. I probably received it when I was six or seven. Um, my head was always big growing up. Um, so they called me Juju Bean. Um, so yeah that's the name um it still rings a bell um family friends and the people that know me well call me juju um i have a few pronunciations with my first name so i just tell people hey juju it is or juice or jay <laughs> good question good question <laughs> yeah so game was over we lost the game we we traveled home mm -hmm. and then from yesterday on preparation for the next game started right um How does a typical week looks for you? How how would you describe a typical game week um, with practices or maybe mm -hmm. individual workouts, mm -hmm. film preparation? Maybe you can guide us through a little bit through your week. So for me, after the game, um, I'm going to watch. Uh, well, I've watched the um, Stuttgart game probably three times already. Um, defensively, special team wise, and just seeing uh, some changes in myself and my play the teammates next to me um so i watched um for two days then i go to the following week um i watch as much film as i can um take care of my body um uh, so whether that's food um hydration um lifting treatment um it, it varies from day to day you know i get up and i say oh i'm gonna do this or up oh, i have to go in the office talk to the coaches um You know, talk to Paul. He's one of the good guys um, on the staff that I can just talk to. You know, you know, talk about the the mental things, um, the things that, um, yeah. Um, so uh, that's about that. So we practice on um, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and then uh, get in a river every night. Like, oh, you do that? Oh, the, the, ice bath? the river is the best thing ever here. Like the water, like it feels so good. I get in neck down um, for like 10 minutes. Then I take a hot shower and then I rest. Great. Yeah. We have two questions in there I want to answer. Is One is why is the offensive coordinator at the game, not at the sideline? Um, that's an interesting and good question because um, often you see the coordinators at the sideline. But our coaching staff, offensive coaching staff, decided that um, Kyle Callahan, who is the offensive coordinator, is in the coaching box. So mm -hmm. he has a better view from mm -hmm. the top. So he is more the... Eye in the sky. Eye in the sky. And he is also more, since he was a quarterback, and he's more the... I mean, he, of course, he's the overall coordinator, but he 
needs to see the coverages and how deep is the defender standing. Mm -hmm. So is it man coverage? Is it zone coverage? And mm -hmm. for him personally, he decided to be in the box and with uh, Dominic Bauer as a run coordinator, mm -hmm. Frank Rosa and Philip Fleitsch, he has three assistant coaches at the sideline and they are connected through headphones, headset. headsets. Yeah. So uh, communication runs really well and uh, for Kyle, it's better to be up there. And um, he... He enjoys it. I think the little calm you can get in these boxes to concentrate on game plan on calling mm -hmm. and, and uh, yeah, that's, definitely that's his thing. Um, on defense, we have it differently. Uh, Coach Malik Jackson is at the sideline mm -hmm. and he has an assistant in the sky mm -hmm. telling him, you yeah, know, what is the formation, down yeah. the distance, all these things who need to be communicated in a yeah. box. Our coach is always at the games, like always, like whether you're in the box, on the sideline. Hey, they may be in the stands. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have a longer question from Barakus. Uh, as I missed the start, not sure if someone has already asked, but how is the mental situation during such a game? Defensive fight brings back the ball back several times, but still not countable outcome. Do you simply enjoy the time being on the field or is it mentally challenging to go out over and over again? Oh, no, not at all. Um, that's a great question, by the way, brother. Um, you know, we're a team. We're a family. Um, you know, our job is to get the ball back to the quarterbacks um, as much as he needed um, and to the offense. You know, we would come off on a field and be down for three, four plays. And in our mindset, we have to expect to go back out there because it, it can always be a sudden change or turnover or, you know, they punt the ball, you know, we're ready to go. You know, we can't let up. Like I said, there was going to be a dog fight and the defense, we're, we're the dogs, you know, we're the dogs of the team. Um, so, no, like you're never, it's never a, a mental thing. You know, you just got to have that, your mental ready as a matter of fact, and just expect to be out there every play. And I feel like that's why we kept getting the ball back, you know, because we was hungry for points. Like we, we wanted the, the ball you know, in our offensive hands, you know, whether they're performing well they're perf or not, you know, because you never know when it can click, you know, so good question. Um, another question, the search right receiver number 19 fumbled the ball, but there was no challenge by head coach Heron. Do you know why he decided that way? I can't decide. I can't answer. Yeah, I, the, I, you... I can't really answer. And I seen him um, talking to the ref. Um, I, I think he was uh, assuming that they were going to review it. Or something and by the time they ran a play it was too late you know it's a game of inches it's all about timing and i'm sure the quarterback you know noticed the head coach was talking to the ump about that and, and just ran stopped. a play yeah. and sometimes it's also like um often when you watch the game on tv you have great angle right oh yeah and uh like everybody is a coach then you know yeah. or a referee yeah but it's the same with referee decisions it's hey like, hey you yes exactly you Did you already subscribe to our YouTube channel? If not, do it now down there and activate the bell so you will never miss Raiders content again. Thank you for your support. And now you can continue watching. Decision in a second. And if Coach Heron was at that moment not mm -hmm. 100% sure to throw mm -hmm. the flag, it's maybe from his angle he didn't, I don't know. And, and, and maybe on TV it was clear, right. but from the side end it's like, uh, You never know. You got you bodies know. in front of you. And then if you do throw that challenge flag and we don't get it. You lose the time out we time probably out. need. Exactly. Close game. Exactly. And we needed those timeouts at the end. Yep. Yeah, let's mm. move forward. But you can still ask questions about last game, but we were in your in your game week. So you said you're practicing, you take care of your body, yes. uh, lifting. <clears throat> um, what else are you going to do besides football and taking care of your body? Do you have some hobbies? Um, what is it? I have a few hobbies. Um, bowling. Um, I'm, oh, really? Yeah. We have to go for a bowl uh, night. Man, I'm really good at bowling. Um, I actually... Um, was going to bring my bowling ball, but no way you have a own bowling I, ball. I actually have 12. You have 12 I have bowling 12 balls. Bowling balls and you I know that when you 12. bring a bowling ball, then your luggage is overweight. Overweight, <laughs> and that's what I did in the uh, CFL. And I said, Yeah, I can't have this problem again. You know, I don't want to have an overweight bag and pay more. So I just left it. <laughs> you really <laughs> yes, have 12 yes, yes. own bowling balls. I never, I never met somebody who has an own bowling ball. Yes. I know that bowling is a big thing in the States, but. So, but... so I actually used to, um, in middle school and high school, well, yeah, middle school, I used to go and watch my grandmother bowl um, probably twice a week. And I would watch her and then go run in the arcade and come back and watch again. And I, 
me and my brothers picked up on it. So bowling is a huge thing in Detroit. You know, you do that, have fun, you know, bet on the side with friends and family and all that. And I also took a bowling class in college because I just fell in love with it. Awesome. Um, I was the only one in the class, believe it or not. So <laughs> I was getting unlimited bowling in. Um, became a two-hand bowler, um, watching the best of the best bowlers. and two-hand bowler? Yeah. So like I have the ball yeah. like this, and then I just roll it. To get the perfect to, spin? Yep. So you might teach me because, oh, yeah. you know, I just take the heaviest mm -hmm. and try it and with try force, to, like, uh, boom. <laughs> so I throw with a little finesse. Actually, you you tend to get more strikes the slower you throw the I ball. I know, I know. But, yeah, but it's, hard to, <laughs> it's hard to. Hey, but no, then let's go for bowling now. Oh, yeah. There's so, a, there are big bowling centers here in Innsbruck. Yeah. I do bowling. I do reading. Um, If I had a bike, um, I would ride the bike around and, you know. Look at the mountains and everything, but I've been bonding lately with the t with the team. Honestly, um, we actually had a DB, um, um, get together yesterday where we barbecued and got in the water and you know looked at the the skyline and played some uh, cards against humanity. Um, it was a very very good um experience for me and just learning everyone else's personality. And you know, it's not just about football. You know, when you're a ball player, you know, because it's so much going on. And when you're outside of football, you don't want to talk about it, you know? So it was good to just have that bond with them. Um, also, um, I love animals. So um, you may catch me talking to the birds or something or the dogs around the office. So, What is yeah. your favorite animal? Um, honestly, it's, I've never liked cats growing up, but um, my brother got a Maine Coon cat. And What is that? It's an exotic furry huge okay. cat like oh i love it they're excited <laughs> they're fluffy like oh yeah <laughs> very and they're it's, it's like he's like a dog honestly like he hisses and growls like <laughs> it's, it's crazy <laughs> so, yeah okay we see a picture now here uh, oh yeah there it is make it bigger please ricardo oh yeah okay. they look like a like mini tigers yeah. or something like <laughs> exactly or, or what is the name of the yeah but like a How big is it? Big? Um, right now he's small, so he's probably like okay, but this big, yeah. But okay. um, if I could be an animal, um, e I gotta go with two animals. Um, okay. either an eagle or a cheetah. Something Ooh, fast, you something know, like fast. a black leopard or a panther. Or something. Fast and and um, muscle or yeah. like athletic, right? Oh, yeah. like, <laughs> like myself. <laughs> Had to throw that in there, chat. <laughs> so then I might be an elephant. Nah, polar bear. <laughs> oh, polar bear. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, um, it sounds sounds interesting. And I think it's really important to have something besides football. You know, if you're just bup, 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 in one oh, yeah. thing, either way, it oh, doesn't yeah. need to be football. But if you're just in one thing, I think it's not enough for your brain oh, yeah. because you need the different Correct. influences on, on your body and, and your brain and your mind. I also have a uh, bragging rights. Um, I'm the king of ping pong. I beat divine. So you you are you are a, a interesting person. With oh it, man, really? I try to be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have more questions. What is Jalen thinking about the league on the balance between the franchises? Um, that's a good question because it's it's. I don't know how much you follow um, I followed social a lot. media. Yeah. yeah, I followed a lot. So the discussion is going on at the moment since there's like a, yeah, three-tier mm -hmm. league probably mm -hmm. with, with the lower teams having struggling really to, to yeah. get closer. Uh, I mean, you played in Frankfurt last mm -hmm. year. You saw a different lot of conference. different conference. Mm -hmm. you, you saw other teams than this year. Oh, yeah. Um, For me, it's always hard to say it after three, four weeks because mm -hmm. you never know. There was also a time when Barcelona in season one changed and at the end they were winning exactly. games. And so, but what are your thoughts? And that goes that? to my comment. I'm glad you said that because I know there's talent everywhere around the league. And it's not just Americans. So it's the homegrown guys. It's the Austrians, the Europeans, the the French French guys. Like, they all have talent. And, um, you know, it's just like, you know, once things click, you know, You can have a bad season. You can have a good season. You know, um, I that was one of the reasons why I came back here because I knew I was going to face talent. Um, um, with the coaches, you know, they can change up the schemes. Um, everyone's like a film junkie when it comes to that. And like, like I said, I was in the CFL and I was still watching a lot of film. 
um, on like Frankfurt, on Tirol, on uh, Barcelona, on Vienna, you know, um, and just seeing everyone progress, you know, week by week, you know, we can have sudden changes, you know, um, Milan put up 32 points on um, the, the last, last game they played. Yeah. Um, um, the Helvetic Arts, yeah. the Swiss team. Uh, and I thought it was going to go the other way yeah, around, yeah. you know, so that made my mindset trigger where, all right, now we have to, you know, put our thinking cap on and, you know, get ready to play ball again, you know, play mm -hmm. Raiders ball. And so, yeah, the balance is pretty well, man. Um, the conference is, of, is, of course, different. I wish that we didn't have to play everyone twice. Mm -hmm. I wish we can play, like, different teams in the different conferences. That's the only thing I changed. But, hey, I'm not the commissioner. commissioner so. Not yet. And not the yet. league is still growing. And, and uh, the, the responsible persons of the league will oh, learn yeah. from every season. Oh, yeah. And they might change something after Definitely. this season. And um, The league is growing. Like, you can see it, like, especially from planning it last year. Like, mm -hmm. it's great. Like, having the Paris team and, you know, the other teams involved in the league is, like, great. You know, it's more games it's moving know? forward oh yeah um there is a question i don't really understand from barracus main main coons main coons mm -hmm. are great what is coons the main coon cats ah yeah i know i get it main coons <laughs> are great but mostly difficult to handle they have very much of own personality huh? That's so. they do <laughs> they do uh, one day they want to be around you and follow you around the next minute they just want their own time you won't even see them around okay. the house um, <laughs> they actually love it outside believe okay. it or not I'm like love it um and then from the close is asking who is the best ping pong player on the team did you have a chance to play <laughs> against um, everyone i haven't played everyone you know you play like two or three so um At the just moment, give, just give me a couple more days and maybe a couple more weeks. And we'll see who the best. Yeah. <laughs> I'll come back on and let you guys know. <laughs> Great. Yeah, let's move on. We have a game this Sunday. Home game. First home game for you. Oh, yeah. Um, second for the rest of the team. Yes. Uh, we're going to play the Milano Seamen here in Tivoli Stadium. It's 425. 425. So Is it 425, Ricardo? Am I right? Yes, I'm right. Should be a Four. cooler game for us then. Yeah. Um, and... Um, Yeah, Milano Seaman is the, the Seaman are coming with a win. Mm -hmm. They yeah. won against the the, the Helvetic Guards last oh, week. Yeah. Um, they have a gunslinger quarterback. They have a gunslinger quarterback. Um, some solid receivers on the outside. You know, good running game. Um, you know, they have a solid defense. You know, um, but we just got to prepare ourselves, and that starts tomorrow with our uh, first prep day. Um, we got the other game behind us, and we're all moving forward. Uh, seeing a lot of the guys in the office today uh, coming in and watching film was a great sign. You know, we're ready to go. We're ready to put on a show for our fans, mm -hmm. and we're excited to get a W. Yep. Obviously, our main goal is to win the game, mm -hmm. and um, football is not so much about personal goals, mm -hmm. but I still want to ask you, what is what would be your personal goal for the upcoming game? Um, I told um, a few of the players on the bus ride that my expectation every game is two interceptions, five plus tackles. Um, I got, you know, if a quarterback is afraid to throw my way, then, you know, I have to find some other player expectations for myself. But yeah, like whenever that ball is thrown, like my, in my head, you know, I, I'm a ball hawk. Um, I play receiver most of my life. Um, and so like when that ball is in the air, I turn into a receiver and I got to go get it. Um, I had five interceptions last year, and I want to beat that. You know, I want to be better. Um, every year I play football, I want to be better than I was last year. So whether that's with interceptions, whether that's with tackles, whether that's becoming a better team player, mm -hmm. you know, something. As long as I'm better than last year, you know, I'm I'm good with that. So if you're going to make two interceptions and five plus tackles, I think we have a high chance to win that game. Oh, yeah. And obviously uh, our offense performance needs to be um more effective oh yeah My and, and i'm i'm 100 sure oh, I, yeah. saw, i saw christian today and and the coach offensive coaching staff mm -hmm. um i think they they straight went to the whiteboard after mm, definitely they, they stepped out of the bus on, on oh, sunday yeah. night and they're working hard and they, they know that they can be better mm -hmm. yeah I, i spoke with christian um immediately after game he was just letting us know that hey like you know like sorry guys sorry guys but I told him, like, no, man, but you got to respect that as a leader, you know, on the offense. And he sees what he sees and he feels how he feels. 
And like you gotta respect that. I uh, noticed he was talking to his family, telling him like, "Yeah, I need to change this. I need to do this. I need to do that." And that was good, you know, just seeing that as a as our QB one, you know, that that leadership role. And I have nothing. We have nothing but faith mm-hmm. in our offense and um, our coaching staff. And you know, we we may put up a hundred points. We may put up twenty one. You you know, you never know. But we're gonna prep very well, and it takes one day at a time. And the goal stays the same: winning football games. And getting better from week oh, yeah. to week, yes, because it's still a long season. Correct. We are facing week five, mm-hmm. and there are still twelve weeks of football. So oh yeah, everything is gonna be fine. Yeah. Um. There's a good question which maybe enters the the part about you mainly about your football journey because we mentioned it already. You played in Frankfurt last yes. year. Yes. You played against us, and you um lost against us here in Innsbruck oh, you won okay. at home but it was still a loss we did. for the people who don't know maybe you can uh, you can tell them what what happened there last year in Frankfurt when when <sighs> Frankfurt Galaxy played the Raiders Tyrol like we knew um in Frankfurt that you know like Tyrol and Vienna were the top you know one of the top teams including us and like um I feel like we just got outplayed you know we didn't get out coach you know they just had better you, you guys had uh um, what do you call it? Um, it's on the tip of my tongue. More explosive plays than us. And uh, we shot ourselves in the foot then, you know, like yeah, we but, shot our... But what happened at the end? You won the game. We did. We did. But? We did. But... By point differential, it wasn't enough to move and, forward in the standings. And that's what I didn't get. Like, I didn't <laughs> I didn't even notice that. Um, really didn't coach told you it. Well, he did, but, you know, in my head, it's like going in one ear and out the other. Like, yeah, it don't matter. Let's just get a W. But, yeah, when you guys came out and took a knee in the fourth quarter, uh, like this, the second drive, I'm like, they're taking a knee. That's when it hit me. I'm like, oh, the points. Like, oh, I think man. that never happened. I, I talked to so many people. Nobody, even people from the States who watched a lot of football games, mm-hmm. never had a situation where – a team which is behind mm-hmm. by points is taking a knee to end the knee. game. In my head, I'm thinking, oh, they're going to throw the ball now. I'm like, oh, I got to get another turnover. <laughs> um, I'm telling the guys, be ready for pass, be ready for pass. And they took a knee and I'm like, like I was lost for words. So lost. And I talked to uh, Sean. Um, I, I remember vividly after the game, like, man, I'm mad you guys took a knee. He said, hey, it's what it is. <laughs> and then our guys were really happy, but the scoreboard showed a loss for the Raiders. But yeah. at the end, It was enough because of the point differential. Yeah. Uh, and, and this is maybe something yeah, really unique. Oh, yeah. But the question is, what are the differences between Frankfurt Galaxy and the Raiders? Because um, um, you decided then to, to move on and you got a call from the Raiders and decided to join us. Um, when, I, when I came to the organization, I just noticed everyone was bought in to the, to the main goal. And that's, you know, winning a championship. And, uh, you know one of the things I always say one day at a time. And when I noticed a lot of the guys were saying one day at a time, or like, you know, we want you here with us. You know, they knew I had some CFL obligations and all that stuff, but everyone was like, no, stay, stay, stay. Like I felt that love. Mm-hmm. Like uh, I, f- I, I felt needed or, or wanted. And, you know, that was the, b- the big difference for me um, to come back here and play. Um, the energy was high. Um, on all phases, you know, I still love my Frankfurt family. Um, I still talk to a lot of the guys there, praying for Jacob and his injury, um, and hope his team can, you know, make it to the playoffs, so I can see you guys again. <laughs> for me, the biggest difference between uh, Frankfurt and Innsbruck is uh, on the one side we have big city life, oh yeah, and on the other side we have like this calm, uh, peaceful yeah. mountain area oh. how was this for you like waking up like i, I took a nap before the <laughs> before i came here and i'm just laying there looking out the window like i cannot get like used to the mountains like <laughs> it's insane like wherever you look up you see the mountains and you see the a lot of the kids and i noticed some kids um like some seven-year-olds eight-year-olds at the grocery store like with the fanny packs and all that i'm like you don't see that you're like you don't even see that in the states <laughs> like and that's just good to just know that um, you're safe and all that. And um, so, yeah, it's pretty good. Cool. Because, uh, I mean, Frankfurt was maybe not so big of a change for you because it, let's 
go really in your story. Mm -hmm. You're coming from Detroit, right? Yes. yes. Born um, and raised in Detroit. Yes. Born Michigan. and raised in uh, Detroit, Michigan, where poverty is real, you know, high there. Um, there's abandoned buildings. There's um, homeless people. There's selling drugs. There's gun violence. There's, you know, a lot of stuff that you don't, you know, want to see or do or be a part of. But, you know, I was blessed to make it out of Detroit. Um, I played Little League football all the way up until 10th grade. Um, after that, um, I played um, I played quarterback and middle linebacker in Little League. Ooh. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> I knew I was either going to be a good player or a coach, you know, one of the two. Um, so I went into the basketball gym, told the coach, like, hey, I'm ready to play football. And uh, they're like, you you scrawny, you little. Like, I wasn't always this, this size. Like, you little, you got to prove something. And so the first practice I did that, um, play offense and defense, receiver and defensive back um, for two years for Martin Luther King High School. Um, my first um, offer was from uh, Max. But let's stay with Martin Luther King High oh, yeah. School. Oh, yeah. Because Martin Luther King High School mm -hmm. and the Raiders and you and another person has a history. Yes. Which is really cool because in 2015, we had a player here, uh, Wendell Brown, Number nine. Playing, number nine, who was playing outside linebacker, a little bit stand up the end. Uh, mm -hmm. um, was I don't know if he was was uh, at school, mm -hmm. but at least he is now working with that school and yeah. he's a teacher and coach there. Yeah. yeah. And you told me you met him in your senior high school yeah. year. Yeah, my senior year, he um came to the program and helped out a lot um on the defensive side. And uh, he told us about his story, and guys like felt for him. Like his his story is unique. Um, and when you told me he played here, I was just so surprised. I'm like, there's no way. And I seen a picture, and it was like, like oh, it brought back so many memories. Yeah. You know, I was like at an awe. Oh. Um, but yeah, he helped out a lot of the guys there, and like he came out with the book, uh, inspirational yeah. kids book. And it was great. And I'm honestly like, believe it or not, I'm I'm following in the exact same footsteps without even knowing. Um, I became a writer last year, um, mm -hmm. writing um, every day in my notebook, um, whether that's about plays, about the dreams that I have, um, about the daily experiences I have with other people. And it's just so good. Cool. But yeah, so I thank the, him for that. For the people who don't know when that Brown played here and... Um, His story is very touching. So if you want to know what happened after he played you, just just Google him or type it in on YouTube. You will find something. Not so much good things happened, but at the end, um, he came back home safely. And now he's doing a lot of great work in his home city of Detroit mm -hmm. and working with the high school and uh, have, a, have a foundation for kids' education. So uh, Wendell, if you ever see this, would be cool. Um, shout out to you and keep up the great work. Yes. And um, a big hug from the Raiders family. We still have you here in our heart. And now somebody else from Martin Luther King High School is here. So oh, yeah. the, the uh, history continues. Oh, yeah, it does. <laughs> part two. Yeah, part two. <laughs> so then after high school, you got a couple of offers for college? Uh, yes. Um, I was committed to Wisconsin to play receiver um, in 2014. But I, they were a running team. You know, I expected not to get the ball much. And I just, once again, second-guessed myself and – you know, believed that I was supposed to be somewhere else. Um, so I went to University of Iowa, um, spent two years there, uh, transferred to a junior college um, for a semester, played there, um, and then transferred again to Northern Illinois. And so like usually when people go to junior colleges, they give up on those dreams and, mm -hmm. you know, just stop playing ball or don't care about school. But, you know, I, I knew I was destined to be great. Um, I, I was ready for that role. I was ready to show people in Detroit that there is a way. Um, if you have faith and put your thinking cap on and just believe. Um, so I ended up going to NIU, um, set out my first year there, um, and then played two years. Um, and then went to the Houston Texans. Um, I was there for mini camp. Uh, they released me, but that didn't stop me. Um, I ended up getting a call from the Spring League. Um, I played two years there with no pay. Um, <laughs> yes, with no pay. So, you know, I was just putting film together. And that was my main goal, you know, get film out. As, and I was my own agent at the time. Um, I still am. Um, ended up transferring or after the Spring League, I ended up getting a call from the USFL. Um, around the time uh, COVID 
um, mm-hmm. was a big issue. And I had a workout with the CFL Blue Bombers. Um, they loved me. Um, said, yeah, we just can't bring you out because of the COVID restrictions. Respected it, you know, put that cap back on and grind it. Uh, went to the USFL uh, with the New Orleans Breakers. Um, had a high ankle sprain the third practice. Um, recovered pretty well. Uh, slid in some DMs on Instagram to uh, Coach uh, Coach K with the Frankfurt Galaxy. He said, yeah, let's go. Let's bring you out. You ready? And I told him I was ready to go. Um, we played for them, you know, and now I'm here. That's so great. The journey is crazy. Um, within the last few few years it's been a huge journey for me mm-hmm. and I'm so such... you you still have the plan to continue playing football as long as possible yes and who knows what time brings right exactly um I'm the also... sky is still limited. exactly it is man um some guy said i still move like i'm 22 so i use that as a motivation how old are you 27 20 yeah, yeah, it's still young <laughs> you know you're just hitting your prime mm -hmm. yeah, around 30 you will be in your physical prime so oh yeah don't be surprised if you're getting better and better the next two oh, yeah. three years and hopefully you're going to continue playing yes sir right? yes sir um that's interesting what you have to tell us because also about your um um nfl history we have a question in that it goes into this direction do you <laughs> think you can convince i want the maddox to come play in europe not too serious question <laughs> man we talk every day about it um <laughs> about um me coming to the nfl and playing for the eagles or us just playing again with each other like we grew up since we were seven years old give it give the people a little advice why why it's not the same name it's, it's, it's not it's not um But how is the connection? Oh, uh, we're stepbrothers. Yeah. <laughs> um, so me and Avante grew up when we were seven years old, um, lived with his family. He lived with my family. And, uh, you know, we've been together since um, in the States. I stayed with him. Um, he kept me, you know, around football and uh, kept me around the NFL guys. And it was it was good. It was a pleasure to have that. Um, Can you cover him? Oh yeah, he, he can't cover me though. Like he can't cover me. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, yeah. Hope we'll see. Who knows? We'll see what we can do. <laughs> uh, hopefully, he comes and see us play at home. That would be great. Oh yeah, him and uh, Dallas. Yeah. yeah. And for the people who don't know, I'm the biggest Philadelphia Eagle fan. And mm. uh, when we talked about mm -hmm. it, uh, I started playing. I mean, I said it. I think a million times in the show. <laughs> I started playing football because of Brian Dawkins and the Philadelphia Eagles. Yes. So for me, that would be an honor if he comes to Innsbruck. And oh yeah. I can actually say hello to oh, yeah. Eagle. <laughs> Make sure he bring his uh, NFC Championship uh, ring too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we have a really bad news in the chat. The Leipzig Kings announced in a press release that the withdrawal from the European League of Football mm. due to lack of funds threatened them. Mm. That's not good. Sorry to hear about that, Kings. That's not really good, uh, especially from from a league perspective. Um, Uh, yeah, we are live here in the show. We we don't know yet. I didn't read any press release, so completely new. That would not be a good sign. Not good for the Kings. Not good for the league. But um, are they in our conference? No. Oh, okay. No, no, they are in the Eastern Conference with, okay. with Vienna. But but still, um, not not a good, not a good news here in the chat live in Pirates Cove. Mm. But we can't say more about it. But thanks around the ELF, Elias, for for the for the update. Uh, Uncle Charlie is asking you, who is the toughest receiver to cover in practice on the Raiders team? Uh, I honestly can't say his name because he's a, he has a young face. Um, you, need, you mean the little guy? Yeah, he's he, pretty he don't, fast. You don't want to call him little because he's, but it's Marco Schneider. Number yes. Four, so. yeah. uh, no, no, no. Um, he's a 19 year old or 20. He's, um, ah. Uh, Oh, I can't. Oh, I can't think of his. I, I know his face. I just can't think of his name. But he's not on our roster. Um, yeah, he's then, on the younger team. Ah, oh, so you might gonna face him in practice. Yeah. someday. Yeah, and then you can. But you saw him practice. Yeah, again. so we practiced last week, and um, he ran a post route with the outside release and had some speed. I thought he was gonna run a vertical or a comeback, but he ended up running a post. I look back, I said, who is this guy? Like, <laughs> man, I told Coach, I said, I see what you're doing over there, Coach. But yeah, man, um, Jarvis is a great receiver. Han is a great receiver. AP is a great receiver. Um, 
you know, we have some good guys all around. You know, I feel like we go against the best of the best in practice, and that's what helps us get better. Perfect. Uh, we are closely coming to an end of the show, and I want to um, inform you about the upcoming game. Um, and I hope we, you're going to come. Everybody needs oh, to yeah. come on Everyone, Sunday to please, stadium. Please, please, please. Um, we need the home game advantage, and you guys need to be loud, and we need to um, have you in the stadium as much as possible. And, um, yeah, pregame area starts at 1. They're going to be a DJ, they're going to be food, they're going to be drinks, um, they're going to be games. And then stadium doors open, I think, at uh, 3, at three, yeah. And then game starts at um, 4, 4.25. And we're going to have, you guys don't know yet, but it's the um, youth game day. Mm. So all our youth players will oh, yeah. enter. And uh, Coach Florian just told me there are already over 120 kids who are going to run in th through the tunnel. I plan on running with Coach K's son. Oh, I'm really? Sure. Yeah, okay. I'm going to have him on my shoulders or on my back or something. That would be great. <laughs> and yeah, so it's the, the motto or how you say the topic of the day is our youth. We want to celebrate our youth and um, uh, it's going to be really cool. Oh, yeah. Chili is going to be there. Uh, live DJ, everything, and and I hope you just come out and and uh, cheer for our oh, yeah. for our boys. Bring the kids. Um, then a very important thing for the people who didn't have yet subscribed or or followed us on YouTube, better do it because there's gonna be a surprise tomorrow um, on our YouTube channel, and you better subscribe now to get the chance to w win maybe something. Mm. So and it's something pretty cool. So. Um, Ricardo is just posting, the, just posted our YouTube link in the chat. Go and follow it, please. It's free. It doesn't cost you a cent. And us, for us, it's a big help in this uh, algorithm of social media <laughs> and YouTube and everything. <laughs> and you have the chance to win something. So better uh, follow follow us on on YouTube. Um, Maybe last question to you is, um, you're 27 years now old. You discovered already a lot of areas. You were in the States, you were in Canada, you were in Frankfurt, now mm -hmm. in Innsbruck. You saw the world and you, you meet a lot of players and you met already a lot of people. Definitely. What would, you, what would be your advice, especially, uh, for example, to this young receiver you just talked about? I think it's Felix Reiter. Mm -hmm. Is it right? Yes. Yeah, Felix. Yes. So which advice? Because you, you said there were... There were little obstacles in your life, oh, yeah. especially in your football career, but you, it sounds like you saw them always as part of the plan, oh, right? Yeah. So what would be your advice to, to a guy like Felix Reiter? Um, you know, when you, you set goals for yourself um, or you expect to win things or win at a task, um, you have to expect that there's going to be bumps in a row. You have to expect that there's going to be different paths to success, to greatness. And you just learn from them. Um, you know, just believe in yourself. Um, have confidence. Um, it, be ready to learn every day, good and the bad. And because you, you learn something new every day. And so just be ready to learn. Um, be a coach's player. And when I say that, I mean, if you make a mistake in practice or in the game, already know where you mess up at. Um, already know what you can do better. Um, and just know that football is always going to be there. Um, you know, so invest yourself in doing stuff outside of football. Um, for myself, I'm in pilot school as well right now to be a private pilot. Um, But again, <laughs> what are you doing? Man, what am I not doing? You exactly. Know? Like, um, I did landscaping uh -huh. um, back at home when I was sitting at home for a week or two. I was doing landscaping. I was training other kids. Um, you know, I feel like the youth is our future. And to to be around that is just a plus for me. You know, I feel like I'm doing something right. And I, maybe that's why I keep getting, you know, the blessings or able to still play and get over the hump or over the obstacle because I'm doing things right. You know, so just always believe in yourself, have confidence and, you know, just be ready to make those mistakes. You know, they're they're going to happen, you know, just get over them and you will. That's a that's a great advice. And yeah. That brings us to an end, actually. I don't know. Um, if you guys have any more questions, please write them in the chat. If not, we are going to face our most important part of the show. It's the song of the day because we have this playlist on Spotify. <laughs> 
with the best songs in the world. It's no over way. 10 hours, I think, already. Really? Yeah, yeah. And if you write in the chat exclamation mark Spotify, you're going to get the link to the playlist. And um, oh, Ricardo is so quick. It's there already. What? Boom. Just click on it. Follow it. It has um, Ricardo scroll up. How many hours is it already? It's 11 hours. Yeah, 11 and a half hours of mm. great music. And now you have the chance to add one more song to it. Oh. So please um, tell the song of the day for you. The song of the day for me is going to be Bread and Butter by Gunna. I have to listen to that. Bread and Butter. G-U-N-N-A. Yeah, there bread you and go. butter by Ghana. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you, there was a, a, a real gone viral a couple months ago of mm -hmm. Post Malone singing to a, to a song and it was great. The name was Big Chat Plane. Big, ah, yeah. But I, he didn't, they want to do a collabo, these two bands, but he didn't, I think he didn't did release it. Oh, yet. not yet? No, not yet. but the original, I want to put the original on the playlist. It's Big Chat Plane. Big Jet Plane by Restricted. That's a good song. And I, because he was a, a cappella singing to uh -huh. that song. Like and with the guitar? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I'm waiting for the release of, of it. And yeah, we will see. Yeah. Thanks for the sub. Oh, um, appreciate that. Jube92. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and thank you for all your support. Thank you for all your. Uh, positive words also on social media and and on Instagram and everywhere also about uh, the injury of Sandro about the heads up post after you guys lost there were some nice words there were also some critical words mm -hmm. that's that's okay uh, nothing Which is was expected was expected nothing is personal mm -hmm. I mean that's that's uh, that's good and yeah thank you Raiders family and uh, we hope that you're gonna come to the stadium on Sunday Saturday. Sunday. Oh, Sunday. Okay. It's a Sunday game. Got gotcha. you. Sunday. Afternoon. I told someone Saturday. Oh, really? Uh, Got to fix that. Fix that. <laughs> yeah. Jalen, you want to say something to the audience? Some last words of the show? Hey, I appreciate you guys for tuning in, man. Hopefully, I can come back and you know be, you know, some help to you guys. Um, so I thank you for having me, and I look forward to the season, man. It's going to be a fun one. Um, on the field and off the field, man. Hopefully we can do something with the community as well where we can all come together and have a good fan base. And uh, thank you again. W's in the chat. <laughs> W's in the chat, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Jalen, thank you for coming. Was It really was a pleasure. Nice uh, talk with you. Nice interview. Thanks for all the information you shared with us. Thank you. Um, to the Raiders fans. Oh, now the W's are coming in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, to all the Raiders fans out there thank you for watching um, thanks for the support again and we gonna see us next week in the Pirates Cove again with Max and uh, we also gonna see us in Tivoli Stadium on Sunday 4.25pm Raiders Tyrol against the Milano Seamen mm -hmm. and hopefully we're gonna put up a big show for you guys and uh, we can celebrate the W at the end of the game have a great week, stay healthy, and support us everywhere you can. Thanks for having you. Goodbye. Ciao, ciao. <laughs>